Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Gaurav Kharia. I work as a clinical lead at Center for Bone Marrow Transplant and Cellular Therapy and also uh, as a senior consultant in pediatric hemato-oncology and immunology at Indraprastapolo Hospital, New Delhi. Today I'll be talking about sickle cell disease. What is sickle cell disease? Sickle cell disease is one of the commonest form of red cell disorder across the globe. This is a disease where because of some underlying mutation, the shape of red cell, which is, which is usually a biconcave shape, it is altered to a shape of a sickle cell, okay, sickle, and that is where this disease derives its name as sickle cell disease. What is sickle cell trait? Sickle cell trait is, a, is also called as a heterozygous sickle cell state. This is a state where a child inherits only one defective gene, uh, sickle defective gene from one of the parent, either mother or father. So these, these, I will not say these are the patients, but these people or these kids are affected with one defective sickle cell gene, which does not affect that qual their quality of life. But yes, they are at risk of inheriting it to the future generations. So which should be taken into consideration at the time of their marriage. What problems sickle cell disease can cause? Sickle cell disease is a multi-system disease. The defective blood which is carrying these sickle cells, it is circulating everywhere in the body. So technically, it can affect every part of the body, may it be brain, eyes, lungs, kidneys, gonads, or every part of the body can be affected. Typically, this disease manifests as uh, anemia, and also as veno-occlusive or painful episodes. This is the commonest presentation of sickle cell disease. But on the other hand, it can affect any part of the body as I explained earlier. What are the complications of sickle cell disease? The complications of sickle cell disease can be varied. Uh, as we discussed earlier, it can affect any part of the body right from top to bottom. Usually, we divide these into minor manifestations, minor clinical manifestations, and severe clinical manifestations. The minor clinical manifestations can be, can be in the form of persistent anemia, frequent painful crisis, uh, need of blood transfusions, frequent infections. So these are the usual less complicated or sort of uh, uh, non-life-threatening manifestations. On the other hand, there are some extremely important life-threatening or life-limiting complications such as acute chest syndrome, where the patient presents with symptoms of pneumonia. This is a very, very significant condition, which if not treated properly, it can be life-threatening. Another important complication is stroke, which is again a very important life-threatening or life-limiting complication in a child suffering from sickle cell disease. Another very important complication is splenic sequestrations. These kids are also at risk of having a plastic crisis. So there are myriad of manifestations of sickle cell disease depending on which particular organ in the body is primarily affected by sickle cell disease. Some patient presents with affected kidney, some patients present with affected liver, some with affected brain or with other parts of the body or with a multi-system involvement. How is sickle cell disease diagnosed? Sickle cell disease is diagnosed by a very, very simple test caused, called as HPLC. This tells us about the percentage of various hemoglobins in any person. So in a sickle affected child, the percentage of sickle hemoglobin will be quite high in the symptomatic range. It can range anywhere between 55, 60% to 80 to 90%. What are the treatment options for sickle cell disease? Is there a cure for sickle cell disease? Just like any other chronic illness, we divide the treatment options for sickle cell disease into two broad categories, care versus cure. Talking about the care, as soon as a child is diagnosed with sickle cell disease, he needs to be on some important medications such as hydroxyurea. It is an extremely important medication which works in multiple ways in kids suffering from sickle cell disease. These kids need to be on regular folic acid supplement, supplementation, penicillin, regular penicillin prophylaxis, anti-malarial prophylaxis, and apart from these drugs, they need to be on some 
specific vaccinations should be given to them such as Haemophilus influenzae, pneumococcal, meningococcal because these kids are at increased risk of these particular infections. Apart from these medical aspects, these patients need to be taught about the lifestyle modifications such as they should keep them well hydrated, they should not expose themselves to uh, extreme of weather conditions. So these are the usual options or treatment options for care. When we talk about curative options for sickle cell disease, awaiting gene therapy or genome editing, the only curative treatment for sickle cell disease at this point of time is bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow transplant for sickle cell disease has come a long, long way. The outcomes of bone marrow transplant for sickle cell disease three or four decades back were not very good, very exciting. But with the kind of progress which has happened in past two to three decades, especially the last decade, the outcomes of sickle cell disease have increased phenomenally and in any experience center, we can very confidently say that the outcome of bone marrow transplant for sickle cell disease, either we use a full match family donor or a full match unrelated donor or a partially HLA match family donor, the outcomes of sickle cell disease bone marrow transplant are more than 90% in experience centers. At what age sickle cell disease manifests? Classically, the kids who are affected with sickle cell disease and are symptomatic, they can present quite early in life, usually in the first year of life or I would say initial three to four years of life. However, there are some patients which are less symptomatic, they can present in later years of life as well. How long does a person with sickle cell disease live? Sickle cell disease, as I explained earlier, it's a life limiting and a life threatening disease. The average life expectancy of a person affected with sickle cell disease, even in the best possible clinical scenarios, is not beyond four decade of life. This is very different in developed world as well as, as compared to the developing countries. In developed world, it is usually around four decade of life, but in developing world, African countries, Middle East, the average life expectancy of a child suffering from sickle cell disease is not beyond the second decade. So today we discussed about sickle cell disease. How is it transmitted? How is the clinical manifestations? Uh, how can we diagnose sickle cell disease? And what are the treatment options for sickle cell disease? So in a nutshell, I would like to tell you that it is a preventable disease. If the eligible couple knows their sickle status, they can very well prevent the child from having sickle cell disease by consulting a gynecologist, a pediatrician and getting proper understanding about how it can be prevented. Even after taking all the precautions, if unfortunately a child is born with sickle cell disease, then the parents should look at the earliest clinical manifestations, this child should be taken for medical consideration and should be started on medications as we discussed earlier to provide optimal care to these patients. Keeping in mind that there is always a hope, there is always a cure for sickle cell disease. It's not a, a sort of a death sentence. Patients suffering from sickle cell disease, if treated on time, they can be cured, cured forever and they can live a healthy, normal life just like other peer groups. Stay safe, stay healthy and stay informed. In case you know any child who is suffering from sickle cell disease, please advise them to see a pediatric hemato-oncologist and a transplant physician and I am sure they will definitely be able to help them out. Thank you.